Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Bursting forth with life unending. to invite you to our YouTube channel, All People's Church Bangalore. We are pleased to make a lot of resources available on this channel. There are numerous playlists uh, that include our Sunday sermons, our TV programs, our daily devotional called Living Supernaturally, and uh, also our Foundations course and several other playlists, uh, resources that you could use. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated with all the new resources that are being released every week. And all of this is given freely to you to equip you 
live powerfully and victoriously with Jesus Christ. Enjoy these resources. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, as always, it's our joy to be able to come your way, spend this time with you in the Word of God. Believing God and learning how to exercise our faith in God in any given situation in life, through various situations in life, is very important. It's, it's very foundational, very fundamental to our journey uh, through life as believers. So we must learn how to believe God, be intentional uh, in believing God through various circumstances and situations in life. And we've been emphasizing that over the last few weeks. Uh, today we want to share another aspect of uh, concerning believing God, which the Lord Jesus emphasized and he taught us explicitly uh, when it comes to believing God. And that is to say what we believe. On uh, several occasions, as we see recorded in the Gospels, Jesus not only demonstrated that as a means to exercise faith, that you release it through words that you speak, but he also taught his disciples to do the same thing. That is, he taught his disciples saying, look, if you believe God and you have faith in God, then this is the way you are going to release that faith in order to put that faith to work in your life. Now, when we put our faith to work, we release our faith or we exercise our believing God, then we see the power of God uh, go into operation in our lives. So until we mix faith with the Word of God and release our faith, that Word which God has really given to us, uh, uh, lies dormant. It's waiting to be believed and it's waiting for faith to be released. And once faith is released, then the power of God goes into operation and things begin to happen in our lives. And so this is a very important aspect, a very important part of believing God, of learning to say what we believe. Our one incident where Jesus explicitly taught his disciples on uh, saying what they believe is recorded for us in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Jesus demonstrated that first, and then he gave the teaching concerning having faith in God. How did he demonstrate that? In Mark chapter 11, verse 12 onwards, it says uh, that on the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, he said to the fig tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Now, just imagine this whole setting and what was happening. Jesus, Jesus was hungry. He saw a fig tree in a distance. He, uh, this was not the season for figs, uh, for ripe figs. He came there. He found nothing on it. And he spoke to the tree and he said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. His disciples heard it. First of all, it was so strange that he would speak to the fig tree. And uh, he would speak in such a manner to the fig tree. But sure enough, the next day, as they passed by on the same road, it says in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Peter sees what has happened. Overnight, the fig tree withered away, dried up from the roots. And when Peter pointed that out, it is at that moment Jesus begins to share the following instruction. Mark 11, verse 22. Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God." For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you what things you ask when you pray, 
Believe that you receive them and you will have them. So Jesus begins to give teaching concerning faith. And he, he, he said, look, what you saw happen just now, or what you saw happen overnight, was the result of what I, what, I, what I employed, and this is what I did. And he's teaching them about faith. He said, have faith in God. And when you have faith in God, here's what you can do. You can speak to a circumstance. You can speak to the mountain. You can speak to whatever in the, is in the natural. The mountain is just figurative of something in our world, in our realm, in the natural realm. He said, whosoever therefore will say to the mountain, and you tell it explicitly what needs to be done to it, be it removed, be cast into the sea. And you don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. So Jesus is talking about having faith in God, Believing in your heart and then saying it with your mouth, saying what you believe. And you have no doubt in your heart that what you're saying will be done. It will come to pass. Then Jesus said, you'll have it. It will happen. So a very important teaching on how to release our believing in God. So you believe the promise of God. You believe what God has spoken to you in his word. And you spend time in it. You focus your mind on it. And you say, this is what I believe. Because God is truth. God is true. He cannot lie. His word is truth. God has magnified his word above his name. God is watching over his word to perform it. And I believe that word. I'm starting with that word. I'm going to stay with that word. I'm going to finish with that word, with the promise he gave me. And so you soak yourself in that word and you let that word fill your heart and mind. So we're not talking about a casual engagement with God. We're not talking about a casual engagement with his word, a cursory glance at his word. We're talking about believing the word of God. Where you're saying, God, this is your word. I believe it. My whole heart is fixed on that word. Now, when you have faith in God, which is having faith in his word, Jesus said you can speak it. You begin to declare the promise of God for your life. Now again, we're not talking about simply parroting the promise. You're not just simply reciting a promise. You're not simply saying it because you know, somebody told you to say it. You're saying it because you are releasing your believing. You are expressing your believing. You're saying, I believe this word and that's the way it's going to be in my life. That's why you're speaking it because you believe it in your heart. So you begin to speak and say, by his stripes, my body has been healed. My body was healed by the stripes of Jesus. Now at this moment, you could have sickness, you could have pain, you could have all kinds of disease. The doctor could have given you a report concerning the condition in your body. And you know, the doctors will do what they do. We respect them, we respect all of that, and that's fine. But you are believing the word of God, and God's word says, that he forgives all your sins and he heals you of all your diseases. God's word says, by the stripes of Jesus, the wounds that Jesus bore on the cross, you were healed, you were made whole. Now you lock into that promise, you believe it. Now you begin to say that over your own life. You begin to say, body, you have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Body, 2,000 years ago, Jesus removed every sickness from you and you are healed. You begin to call your body healed. Or you begin to speak over your situation. You begin to declare success over your life. Maybe you made several attempts and you failed. Now, you don't settle for that failure. God has promised in his word that you will, have, you will prosper in your ways and you will have good success. God has promised that whatever you do will prosper. So you begin to take that word and say, my God said, whatever I do will prosper. And because you believe that word now, you begin to release your believing. You release your faith by saying it. You begin to speak over your situation. You begin to speak over your career, your profession, or whatever you're doing, your business. And begin to say, I prosper because God's word says, I will prosper. You begin to speak over your circumstance, your situation. And that's what Jesus taught us to do. He said, have faith in God. If you have faith in God, what are you going to do? You're not going to talk about the mountain. Now, so many people talk about the mountain. They say, you know, how big the mountain is, how huge it is, what a big problem it is. It's been there for so long. 
Uh, there's nothing that can seem to move the mountain. And Jesus never told you to do any of that. And so don't do any of that. Don't speak about the mountain, how big it is, how long it's been there, how difficult it is to move it. What did he say? He said, you have faith in God, then you command the mountain to move. That means you have to speak what you believe God has spoken. And you speak your faith, not the present circumstance, not the situation, not your doubt, not the doubts, not the fears, not the unbelief, but you speak your faith. That's what Jesus taught us to do. And then Jesus said, when you speak your faith, you don't doubt in your heart that what you're saying will come to pass. So when you speak to the mountain, you wake up the next day, the mountain is still there. You don't quit. You know that you are going to stand firm in faith, and that there's only one option for the mountain. It has to move according to what Jesus said. From your side, you've got to believe. Keep on believing. Like we said, you start with the word, you stay with the word, you finish with the word. That you keep on believing the word of God. You say, no, the word of God will be fulfilled in my life. If it's going to take another day, so be it. But I'm going to stay with the word until I see that word fulfilled. And so you speak to the mountain. You continue speaking to the mountain. You don't quit because God's word is true. God is watching over his word to perform it. And his promises will never fail. He will never fail. So you have faith in God and you speak your faith. You say, mountain, I command you in Jesus' name, be removed out of my life. I declare, I decree, this is the word of God and this is the way it will be in my life. So you continue speaking that. You declare that. And Jesus said, if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you are saying will come to pass, that means you believe this is the way it's going to be. This is what I will have in my life. This is my portion in my life. You believe that what you say will come to pass. You believe that what you say will come to pass. I'm emphasizing that because that's what you and I have to believe. We believe that what God has spoken, which we have received in our hearts, which we have mixed faith with, which we are now releasing through our mouth, will come to pass. That's the way it's going to be. There is no other option, no other way. We believe that what we say will come to pass. He said, you will have whatever you say. Now you see, these are the words of Jesus Christ. They're not the words of a man. They are not the words of some denomination. They are the words of Jesus. Jesus taught us this. And so we employ this. We engage in this manner in our life. We have to learn to say what we believe. Our believing is expressed through our saying and through our doing what we do. So now, let me just bring our attention to a few other scriptures before we close. Um, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 10, he says this, But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Verse 7, Or who will ascend into the abyss, the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, the Apostle Paul is pointing back uh, to an Old Testament scripture from the, from the book of Deuteronomy uh, where the Lord God reminded his people, he taught his people, he said, look, my word is near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. So don't say, you know, who will ascend up and bring God down and don't speak like that. So Paul is quoting from the Old Testament and he's speaking to New Testament believers who've, who've received righteousness by faith. And he's saying, you know, we who have received the righteousness by faith, this is how we speak. He says, we don't speak hopelessness. We don't say, you know, who, who's going to bring God from above into my situation? Or who's going to bring him up from the dead as though he was still dead? We don't speak like that. We don't speak hopelessness. But what do we speak? We speak the word. The word is near us all the time, meaning the promise of God, the word of faith, the word that has produced faith in our hearts. That word is near us. So you've heard the word. You know what the word of God says. It has brought faith into your heart. 
It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. And so you and I need to believe that word. He says, with a heart, man believes. So we believe that word in our hearts. And he says, with a mouth, confession is made. So we begin to speak that word. So you see how what we believe in our heart has to be spoken out of our mouth. And he said, when we do that, we experience the salvation of God. We experience what that word has intended to bring to us. In this particular case, he's referring to the gospel. He's saying to the gospel of salvation. It brings God's saving, healing, forgiving, delivering, redeeming power into your life. Now, but for you to experience that salvation, what must you do? You believe that word in your heart and you say it with your mouth. You confess it. You declare it. What happens? It becomes yours. You receive that salvation. You experience it at its reality in your life. And so this is true for every word that God speaks. The word of faith. It brings faith into our hearts. We believe that word. And when we say it with our mouth, then that's, that, that word then becomes our experience. So I want to encourage you to put this truth that we find in God's word into operation in your life. You believe God. You believe Him against all odds. And then you say what you believe. You declare that in your life. And you believe that what you're saying will come to pass. Jesus Christ said, you will have what you say. Begin to live life like this. Begin to say what you believe over every area of your life, over your finances, over your family, over your marriage, over your children, over your future, uh, over, over your ministry, uh, over every area of your life. You take the word of God. Let that word produce faith in your heart. You believe it, and then you begin to speak it and believe that what you say will come to pass. Jesus said, you will have what you say. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. Receiving God's Guidance, Offenses, Don't Take Them, and Water Baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches, and ministries. So download these at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. We trust that you've enjoyed this uh, message today just to encourage your hearts along the lines of faith, along the lines of believing God's word, and saying what you believe. This is so powerful that you can, when you release your faith, you will see God's power go to work in your life and you will actually see the word of God coming to pass. And you move from one level of experience to another as you journey with God. Make sure you practice this and you live like this. We're going to pray together before we close and I'm going to pray God to empower you, encourage you to live by faith to say what you believe. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, your promise to us, the word of faith, the word that produces faith in our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you'll help us engage this principle that Jesus taught us, that things in our realm, things in our world, respond to the words of faith that we speak and that things will change. Help us to say what we believe and to believe that whatever we are saying will come to pass. And according to what Jesus taught us, we will have it. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. It's always exciting to journey with the Lord as He takes us from season to season as a church family and especially to enter into this new season of uh, writing new songs, recording them, worshiping God together and uh, capturing these moments has been quite an adventure. This song, Come Alive, is from Psalm 1, which declares over and over again that blessed is the man who sits not, who stands not, who walks not, in the ways and things that God does not approve of. In other words, it means that when we sit, stand and walk, 
in the ways that God approves, in the things of God, in the ways of God, that's when we truly start living. That's when we come alive. Come soak in my presence, light and life, pure delight. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deeply rooted in the Word and a life with powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2020 for the following courses a one-year certificate in theology and Christian ministry, a two-year diploma in theology and Christian ministry, a three-year bachelor's degree in theology and Christian ministry, and a three-month short-term Bible course in Varanasi starting every September. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College all People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA.